Life is a collection of moments from the intensely personal to the collective. Each of these moments are ingrained in our minds in such a way that they allow us to visualize the past. At Time Looper, we are changing the way that you experience the past forever. We turn back the clock and place you in the moment and allow you to relive the moment through virtual reality videos delivered directly to your smartphone. Today, we will all travel back in time together. Please cue the video. We are in New York, so let's take a moment to time travel while we're here in the city together, and let's view one of the most iconic moments in the city's history. We will now, as a group, imagine that we are in Times Square, and we will travel back in time to August 14th, 1945, VJ Day, the end of World War II, and together relive one of the most famous kisses in history. Yes. Yeah. It's from the phone. Are we fixing the sound? Is that what's going on here? Now, um, the, also the app also has audio, so it plays the music of that time, and it's directional so that it, you can look around and see where the noise is coming from. But now let me walk you through how Time Looper delivers this emotionally powerful experience to the consumers. For example, in London, we partner with uh, Tower Bridge Museum. Visitors uh, arriving to the museum have the option to purchase Time Looper's Tower Bridge experience with their admission ticket then they receive a cardboard headset and then download the app. In that instance, they travel back in time and relive the medieval London in the throes of the Great Fire of London 1666. Visitors of Tower Bridge love their tower time looper experience. They love it so much, they pay for it. They love it so much that when they leave Tower Bridge, they visit other locations across the city to unlock and experience other breathtaking moments of time looper. A visit to London with Time, time Looper app is a walk through time. time. And this is only one site. And the top 100 sites around the world are visited by 1 billion people. 1 billion people hoping to connect with the history. Imagine exploring all these sites with Time Looper. And Time Looper's content enables experiences beyond travel and has implications, applications in education and broadcast media. Google is leveraging our existing content and, and making their uh, Google Expedition uh, curriculum more immersive for the enrolled students. CNN partnered with us to recreate moments for the TV show The 80s produced by Tom Hanks from the fall of Berlin Wall to the Space Shuttle Challenger and content creation. Our, our CEO, CCO, Chief Creative Officer, is an award-winning director with 13 years of experience in production and post-production. He engineered a technology that enables production companies to create high-end VR content. Our technology is deployed in two distinct phases, production and post-production. Production is where real actors are depicting the moment, and post-production is where the magic happens to de de deliver this unparalleled experience. We are creating a new market for the entire production industry. Production companies excited with the distribution and monetization opportunities are already creating content for the sites in our ecosystem and leveraging our know-how. Today, 
we invite all the production companies out there to connect Time Looper. We have lots of customers waiting for you to deliver unparalleled experiences for their customers on Time Looper app. And history is not only famous events at historic sites. History is being lived every day and needs to be captured as they are lived. We are creating VR production tools for consumers so that everybody can turn their creations to immersive experiences on Time Looper app. And today, we are thrilled to announce that we are turning back the clock for New York and bringing the iconic moments to life. Download the Time Looper app and time travel at Times Square, top of the rock, Empire State Building, Federal Hall, and Dakota. And soon, major sites around the world will be using Time Looper, including the Great Wall of China. Travel back in time with Time Looper. All right, nice work, Time Looper. All right, judges, go ahead. So what's the revenue model here? It sounds like you've got two things going, both the app and experience that people are paying for, and then a platform that you're trying to, for the content creation. How do you monetize? Time Looper monetizes principally in three ways. The first way is that this is a freemium content model. There is some content out there that is, that must be free and unlocked and available for people everywhere. Uh, as Chris was speaking about earlier, to increase customer adoption of virtual reality. Once they get onto a site like Tower Bridge, they have the option of paying to enhance that experience. And for places where we deliver these immersive experiences outside of the context of a attraction site, they can purchase it directly through their phone like they would through Google Play or iTunes. The second is through uh, um, Advertising. So whether it's uh, global Fortune 500 brands working with us to create immersive stories to bring their stories to life, or the Coca-Cola sign that you saw in that advertisement, we can do native advertising inside of our stories. Uh, and then the third way is that by bringing all of these disparate uh, tourism sites onto one platform in the tourism ecosystem, we activate and uh, create a lot of value for other players in the tourism ecosystem. So not only do tourism sites see value in participating in Time Looper, but now tour bus companies, uh, walking guides, uh, airlines, all of those players want to play on Time Looper. As we drive our uh, customers to those services, we will achieve lead generation revenue as well. So, uh, great presentation. I'm very interested in the consumer play that you kind of threw out there at the end, but before we get to that, what is the production cost involved in each one of these episodes or whatnot that, you, that you're filming? And when, when would you actually be able to break even on monetizing one episode? Uh, as you know, production uh, cost depends on the story you are telling. Uh, for example, uh, making the Blair Witch or the Star Wars is not the same. But uh, I can say that uh, we can create VR movies 60% uh, uh, cheaper than the market. Because of the technology you have? Because of the technology and the international production pipeline we use. And then with regards to break even, the economics of the time looper business model are quite favorable. Uh, let's create a hypothetical use case of Ellis Island. If we wanted to create a five-part customer journey, an immigration story into the gateway of America, that would probably cost us somewhere around $100,000 to $150,000 to create that entire story. What we would then do is we would then partner with the site to offer this as an integrated uh, experience into the ticket price. Every year, uh, Ellis Island gets 4 million visitors. If we were to charge $3 per visitor as part of the ticket price, that's $12 million a year in revenue. Even if we were to offer Ellis Island 50% of that revenue, we would then net out $6 million a year. And because this is a virtual attraction, the content is evergreen. So if this content is good for four to five years on a technology life cycle, you'd be looking at somewhere between 24 and $30 million of revenue on a $150,000 investment, and that is one site around the world. Thanks. Gil, it looked like you had a question earlier. So ultimately, you're a content publisher. Is that the way I should think about the business model? That's true. So, yeah. it's a, so we, we provide a distribution channel, yeah. and we activate all these sites and travel companies so that they do the, mon they do yeah. the marketing. OK, thanks. Do, do you think, like, how do you prevent this from becoming just a novelty? 
Like, you know, I, like I can see why if I go to Alcatraz, this is a much more exciting thing to walk around Alcatraz with than the like, headsets they give you right now. But then once I do it once or twice in one or two different locations, is there any reason I'm keeping this on my phone and I want to do it again the next time? Actually, um, when we look at the statistics, when people watch one location, one video, they go and visit at least two other locations. It's more about the story and less about the technology itself. So once you are in, it's like then you want to go to the next destination and explore. Like it will be really cool to see this moment, this place in a 360 so that I can visualize. So the app knows which direction you are looking at. So it's a time traveling experience on that specific rather than disconnected video view. So now we expect all these locations to be uh, an incomplete experience without time looper. So uh, my question is about market testing and since it is a new experience. It's hard to know what the demand for it might be. H how did you measure that, and how do you project that? We, uh, we launched in April at Tower Bridge in London with a gated attraction experience. Uh, to that point, uh, the Tower Bridge experience offered an augmented reality app uh, for free as part of the admission ticket, the nine pound admission ticket into Tower Bridge. Their market penetration was 1%. When we offered it for a week for free, we saw 65% market penetration. Then, when we decided that we would monetize and we charged five pounds, which is about 750 per person, we saw 30% market penetration. When we charged, I'm sorry, that was when we charged two pounds. When we charged uh, five pounds, we saw 25% market penetration. Mm. Just to give you a sense, the audio guides across the travel and tourism industry average 15 to 20% uh, market penetration. So when we are charging five pounds at 25% penetration, you know, we are outpacing every other product that's out there in the market. And one of the main reasons for that is you see other people looking at it and seeing medieval London versus, and, and you, you are curious, like it's a piece of cardboard and I have my smartphone, can I try, can I have it? So, so you're the new audio guide for the museum, basically. I think that what we offer museums is an entirely new and immersive experience. When you go to London, with your children, your children are not saying, do I want to go to Tower Bridge or do I want to go to the Tower of London? They're saying, I want to go to the Harry Potter experience. What we're offering museums and cultural institutions and locations of historic import is that we are offering a new way to engage and activate history. Yeah. And the, the thing that Audio Guide cannot do is all these attraction sites are super fragmented and they want to be on a single platform so that they can push their new stories and drive new traffic. So when everything is collected under one and you can see all these stories, it's kind of like selecting your movies and then choosing your destination accordingly. So that's why everybody wants to work on the same platform rather than in isolation. All right, we're out of time. Let's give it up one more time for Time Looper.